Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Beginner Guide to One Piece. Brooke made his first appearance in manga chapter 442, corresponding with anime episode 337. However, it is clear that Brooke would plan to be in the series for a long time before his introduction. He was seen in concept art along with the rest of the crew. In some of the concept art, it appeared that Brooke was originally intended to be a little bit more menacing in terms of appearance. Ever since the beginning of One Piece, Oda had made it quite clear that Luffy does want a musician on the crew due to the fact that Luffy said so himself that he truly wants a musician. In an SBS, Oda gave away what nationality the Straw Hack would be if they were real people. His, his response to what nationality Brooke would be was Austrian. Brooke was born in the West Blue. Brooke gets five hours of sleep every night. This was revealed in an SBS by Oda himself. Pre-time skip, Brooke had a bounty of 33 million. This was given to him while he was alive. After Judge Dressrosa arc, Brooke was given a bounty of 83 million. Before we get into Brooke's life as a pirate, let's talk about his life before he joined the, the Rumbar Pirates. Before Brooke joined the Rumbar Pirates, Brooke was the leader of a co battle convoy in a certain kingdom that we have yet to learn the name of as of chapter 816. Where, this is where he learned his fencing and many of his attacks received their name. These nicknames of his fencing style were given to him by his previous crew, and nothing else had been spoken of his past before he joined the Rumbar Pirates. But, this is part of Brooke's history, so we had to talk about it. 52 years ago, Brooke used to be a part of Yuraki's crew, the Rumbar Pirates, and one of the many musicians that made up most of the crew. While he and the rest of the crew were still in the West Blue, their ship was one day followed by a baby whale who had gotten lost. This whale was Laboon. Seeing that the whale was upset, Brooke suggested to the captain that they would play some music for the whale to cheer it up. Together with the rest of the crew, Brooke played a beautiful song that worked. The next day when Brooke and his crewmate woke up, they found that the whale was still following them, Despite this, Brooke and the rest of the crew allowed the whale to follow them and even gave the whale a name. As I said before, the whale's name is Laboon. Since then, Brooke and the rest of the crew went around adventuring with Laboon tagging along. To together, they went through a lot of joyful songs together and had a lot of fun. As they journeyed together with Laboon, many of Brooke's crewmates noticed that he was the one that Laboon was closest to. But, Eventually, and unfortunately, Brooke and his crew had to enter the Grand Line. Then they had a dilemma. Since Laboon was still a baby, they feared the Grand Line was too da dangerous for a place of a place for a young whale. The rest of the one bar pirates tried to convince Laboon to stay in the West Blue, but failed. Brooke asked Brooke was asked to tell Laboon to stay calm himself. Brooke tried to convince Laboon but likewise failed. Unable to do anything else, Brooke and the Rumbar Pirate tried to ignore the Laboon in hopes that the whale would be hurt from following them and leave. Their plan seemingly worked, and Laboon was not sighted for some time. However, when Brooke and the rest of the Rumbar Pirates entered the Grand Line, they saw that Laboon had followed them into the Grand Line through Reverse Mountain. After seeing that their ship had some repair to be made anyway, Brooke and the rest of the crew continued to sing along with the whale while their ship was being fixed. When their ship was set three months later, Brooke and the rest of the one bar pirates decided to leave Laboon under the care of Crockett, who was a former member of the Roger Pirates, but this was obviously unknown to them at the time. They promised Laboon that they would come back for the whale after going around the world, but Laboon would become very big and that they also promised to take Laboon all along with them on their adventures. Now let's talk about the death of the Rumbar Pirate and Brooke's new life. As Brooke and the rest of the Rumbar Pirate continued to travel the Grand Line, they experienced many challenges, obviously. 
However, one day, the disaster struck the crew. The captain of the Rumbar Pirates and several others got very sick when they caught an incurable disease while exploring an island. To keep the disease from spreading to the rest of the crew, her word infected, Yuraki and all the sick members decided to take the Rumbar Pirate first dip and try to escape the Grand Line through the con belt. Before his death, Yuraki, the captain, asked Brooke to send off him and the infected with his favorite song, Bink's Steak. Even though they lost half their crew, Brooke and the remaining members of the Rumbar Pirate continued sailing onward in, on a new ship. Brooke was appointed their new captain, and as they traveled through the sea, Brooke gained a bounty himself. Things went smoothly for the Brooke and the remaining Rumbar Pirates at first. However, then they entered the Florian Triangle. Brooke and his crewmate were attacked by some enemy pirates, and Brooke and some of his crewmates were barely able to survive the assault. However, since the enemy had tamed had tamed their weapons with poison, and that the Rumbar Pirate Doctor was killed in the attack, Brooke and the survivors were slowly wasting away. However, Brooke had eaten a devil fruit. That devil fruit was the yummy yummy no me or the revived vibe fruit. Brooke then suggested to the remaining members of his crew that they sing one final song before they all die that would be recorded on a tone dial that they had previously bought from the merchant. Since he would be revived after death, Brooke promised his crewmate that he would take the dial and play it for a boon to hear. Overjoyed with Brooke's proposal, the remaining one bar pirate mustered what little strength they had and started singing their favorite song one last time. So, Though joyfully recorded, their song, the remaining one more pirate, slowly grumbled to the poison and died one after the other. They each fell with smiles on their face, until only Brooke was left. With a heavy heart and the promise he made to the loom, Brooke continued playing all alone until he finally died of the poison. Despite some doubts, Brooke's soul was able to return to the mortal world thanks to the powers of his Delphur. However, he had lost his body because of the fog in the area. It made it hard to find the ship, of course, and had to search for it for one year. When he finally found his body, it was just a pile of bones. Only his afro remained intact because it had strong roots. Upon risking rising back from the dead, Brooke gathered up the skeleton remains of a crewmate and stored them all in coffins located deep within the ship. Brooke then spent the next 15 years alone lost that day in the fog with a damaged ship. However, five years before the start of the series, Brooke just drifted the thriller bark and his shadow was stolen by the warlord Genko Moria. Not including Genko Moria, Brooke spent 50 whole years alone at sea until he met the main character of the series, Monkey D. Luffy. Very happy to see people for the first time in 50 years, Brooke gives them a very friendly greeting. And Luffy responds by asking Brooke to join the Straw Hat Pirate. Brooke uh, then boards the Thousand Study and has a meal with the Straw Hat. However, during the meal he reveals that he cannot join their crew because of the fact that Genko Moria has stolen his shadow and he cannot go out in the sun because if he did, he would die. Luffy agrees to help Brooke, and then the events of the Thriller Bark arc take place, and then Brooke's shadow returned to him when Zoro defeated the Stormwing Ry Ryuma, who had been using the shadow to keep himself alive thanks to Moria's devil fruit. Luffy defeats Genko Moria, and then during the party that takes place after the arc, Brooke asks Luffy, The question is, may I join your crew? Luffy, of course, responds with yes. Due to Brooke's previous experiences and skills that he amassed from the days when Gold Roger, the Pirate King, was still active, Brooke, in all respects, is a veteran pirate. Even though, by through his demeanor and attributes, this is normally downplayed. Brooke is a musician capable of, play of playing any musical instrument. He usually uses a violin to play his music. Though, after the two-year time skip, he switches his main instrument to a guitar. His musical abilities are so good that Laboon used to sing along to his music when they were together. Brooke had pretty good endurance, as he was able to survive and remain conscious 
after Bartholomew Kuma used his alt earth disc jock on Thriller Bark. However, he could not get up or simply decided not to. We're not really so sure which one it was. Brooks' music abilities are very impressive. He has even been able to put people to sleep before using music. However, his devil fruit is another thing entirely. Out of all the ability given to Brook by his devil fruit, the most notable would have to be the fact that he was able to come back to life after dying one time. Another notable ab ability Brook had is soul projection. It allows him to leave his body with his soul and do things such as recon and even go through walls. It is a very interesting ability and has yet to be explored to its full capacity. Brooke used a type of sword called a Shy Comedia, a sword that is concealed inside of a cane. He uses this sword in conjunction with his fencing skills and has had it for at least 15 years. After the after the time skip, Brooke had named his sword Soul Solid due to him developing the ability to coat it with the aura of his soul, freezing it in the process. And anyone who comes in contact with it is also frozen. He claimed that the long arm of his tribe has helped him sharpen the sword. This is only the beginning. Brooke had many more awesome techniques. So many, in fact, I can't talk about them all in one video. But guys, I hope you enjoyed episode 7 of the Beginner's Guide to One Piece, The History of Brook. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. And remember, next week is The Beginner's Guide to One Piece, episode 8, The History of Frankie.